welcome to the next lecture in electrical machines we were discussing the synchronous machines and this is the last lecture for the alternators so in this particular lecture we will cover the operation of salient pole machines so generally whatever the discussion has been done till now is corresponding to general machines whether it is a cylindrical rotor or whether it is a salient pole this uh, discussion today in this particular lecture will focus more on the salient pole machines we have discussed in the salient pole machine that the poles will be projecting out and there will be uniform uh, non uniform air gap so if we compare the salient pole machines with the cylindrical rotor machine so first let us cover the cylindrical rotor machine cylindrical rotor machine will have uniform air gap so if uniform air gap is there between the stator and the rotor then the reactance will remain the same irrespective of the spatial position of the rotor so when the rotor is rotating then they are cutting the flux which is present in the air gap however since cylindrical rotor has uniform air gap it means the reactance will remain same irrespective of the spatial position of the rotor this will possess one axis of symmetry that is the pole or the direct axis so since cylindrical rotor has uniform air gap and the reactance remains same only one axis of symmetry will be there this axis of symmetry is can be called as direct axis or the pole axis however it it is not same when we are going for the salient pole machine salient pole machine is the one where the pole is projecting out so once the pole is projecting out and the rotor is rotating the air gap uh, cutting flux will not be uniform so the reactance will not be the same if the reactance is not same then we will have to deal with two different type of axis of symmetry one is known as the d axis and another is known as the q axis so let us discuss for the salient poles so in the salient pole there will be non uniform air gap between the stator and the rotor because the rotor poles are projecting out then the reactance will no longer be same and it will vary on the spatial position of the rotor so it means there will be two axis of symmetry so we can see that there can be two axis one is known as the d axis so this is mean the direct axis which is present on the polar axis other one is known as the q axis which is present at the quadrature of the poles so in the d axis we have both field and armature mmf so d axis can have the field mmf and the armature mmf but q axis will have only the armature mmf in case of cylindrical rotor machine we will have only the d axis so quadrature axis will not be there now the d axis which is the direct axis is basically the field pole axis so this is the field pole so this is the direct axis now axis which is passing through the center of the interpolar axis is known as so this is your center of the polar and this is the interpolar region so that is known as the quadrature or q axis so there are two axis so based on the two axis theory we will go for two reaction theory which is proposed by blondel so let us look into the two reaction theory so we have understood that there will be two reactants which is the direct axis and the quadrature axis reactants and apart from that the armature resistance will be constant which will be dealing with the copper loss of the machine now the induced emf is e not and the armature current ia which is uh, flowing through the induced emf will be again divided into two basic components one component is known as the current which is flowing through the direct axis and another will have a component of the current which is flowing through the quadrature axis so here the armature current will have a direct axis and quadrature axis component so we can draw the equivalent phasor diagram of the machine now the armature current have two component one is id that is the direct axis 
and another is IQ which is the quadrature axis. So ID is basically perpendicular to E0. So if we take E0 on the reference axis then ID will be perpendicular to E0 and IQ will be along the values of E0. So it will be in the axis of E0. Now armature reactants if we talk about then on the Q axis there will be an armature reaction which is on the Q axis and it is associated with the direct axis whereas on the D axis there will be an uh, armature reaction which is associated with IQ. So we will be having armature reactants as the two component one on the direct axis and another on the quadrature axis. So here we can see that there will be two different type of losses associated one the loss due to the direct axis and another we have the loss due to the quadrature axis together with the loss of the armature resistance. So we can obtain the phasor diagram. However, the leakage reactants XL will remain the same for both the axis. So XL will be additive when we try to find the value of XD or XQ. So we have the armature reactants XAD and XAQ and XL will be common to both additive for XD and XQ. Q axis reluctance will be higher owing to the larger air gap. So when we go to the quadrature axis, the reluctance will be higher compared to the values of the uh, quadrature axis. So XD will be greater than XQ. So the reluctance of XD will be greater than XQ. Now, if we draw the phasor diagram completely and try to understand the operation of the salient pole machine, both in the generating mode and the motoring mode, we have to know few terms. First term we will introduce is the internal power factor angle. So internal power factor angle denoted by psi is the angle between the induced EMF E0 and the armature current IA. Whereas the power angle delta is the angle between the two voltages that is the induced EMF E0 and the terminal voltage V. Now we can write an equation on the basis of the KVL equation. So if we write the KVL equation then we find that the induced EMF E0 is equal to the terminal voltage V plus all the losses that we have in the in the machine. So the losses which is associated with the armature resistance IARA is common because resistance is constant. Now this is the loss which is present due to the reactive component that is XD and XQ, direct axis and the quadrature axis. So in the direct axis the current uh, term will be ID that is the direct axis component of the current and for XQ it will be IQ because we know that IA is basically sum of ID plus IQ. So we can take the current on the two particular axis that is the direct axis and the quadrature axis. If we resolve the component in terms of the internal power factor then we can see that the ID and IQ that is the direct axis component of the current and the quadrature axis component of the current is basically related with the armature current as the component of sin phi and the cos phi respectively. So here we will try to find what is the value of 10 psi. So 10 we know that 10 value is basically the perpendicular by base. So here when we go to the triangle so we have we are knowing that the psi value is here so we will follow the triangle uh, and try to find the perpendicular and base of this part of the triangle so the perpendicular is basically the sum of ad plus you have ac so that will give you the value of cd so cd will be the perpendicular and the base we have is the sum of OE plus ED. 
so we have equal to od and if we resolve the voltage and the current uh, in this particular format so for the generating mode and the motoring mode we will get two different equations where on the numerator we have v sin phi plus i a x q on the denominator we have v cos phi plus i a r a similarly on the this is for the generating action and for the motoring action we have v sin phi minus i a x q and v cos phi minus i a r a so here in this uh, particular equation we can see that the sign convention which is positive uh, is for the generating action and for the negative it is the motoring action whereas the value of delta that is the power angle will be equal to psi minus phi for the generating action and it will be psi uh, phi minus psi for the motoring action so there is a direct relationship between the power factor power angle delta and the internal power factor angle psi and phi is basically the actual power factor angle between the voltage and the current so that will give you the angle of phi so we can resolve this into different components now generally the equation of the induced emf e naught for the generating action and for the motoring action we can write it as v cos delta which is common uh, for the generating mode and the motoring mode and we have a positive sign of the losses iqra plus idxd and on the motoring mode we have the negative sign of iqra minus idxd so this is the induced emf for the generating mode and the motoring mode now generally the we can neglect the armature resistance because the armature resistance is very small for a machine then we can write from the diagram that v sin delta is basically equal to the drop along the quadrature axis that is iq xq and this can be further dissolved in terms of the armature current ia xq and cos of phi plus minus delta that is for the generating mode or the motoring mode now v sin delta we can this uh, cos psi phi plus minus delta we can resolve it as cos a cos b plus minus sin a sin b component and if we try to find the value of the voltage v by taking out this sin delta component so we have to divide uh, both lhs and the rhs side with the sin delta so here we will be having a cot delta and this sin delta will vanish so that is the voltage so here we can take the value of uh, v plus minus i a x q sin phi on the one side and i a x q cos uh, phi cot delta on the other side so we can easily determine the value of 10 delta then so 10 delta is basically i a x q cos phi divided by v plus minus i a x q sin phi so here when we have plus minus sign so plus goes for the generating action and negative goes for the motoring action so in this particular we have de uh, determined the value of 10 delta and in the previous slide we have determined the value of 10 sign now we will take one more topic what is the power developed by the synchronous generator so if we neglect the armature resistance obviously the copper loss will vanish and there will be a power developer. So this power developer equation will be determined per phase basis. So first we will determine for the per phase and the total power will be multiplied with the 3 to get the 3 phase power. So we form 3 different equations. So the first equation is the power developer is voltage into current multiplied with cos phi. So this is the most fundamental equation for the power for a single phase machine. Now we know that iq xq is equal to v sin delta and id xd is equal to e naught minus v cos delta. We also know that id is equal to i a sin phi plus uh, delta and iq is equal to i a cos phi plus delta. So three equations we have formed. <coughs> now substituting equation 3 in equation 1. So if you substitute third equation in the first equation we can solve 
and try to find what is the value of i a cos phi. So we will get on the RHS side v by x d sin delta plus v by 2 x q sin 2 delta minus v by 2 x d sin 2 delta. Now finally on substituting in equation 1, so this value i a cos phi which we have got it we can substitute in equation 1 and we can determine the value of the power developed pd which is a very important equation which is equal to e naught into v by x d sin delta plus v square x d minus x q by 2 x d x q sin 2 delta. So this equation is very very important equation of the power developed when the machine has single phase. Now for a three phase machine the power developed will be three times the single phase power. So these uh, equation of the power developed has got some important points related to it. So what do we understand from this particular equation the important points what we derive is there are two different terms in the power developed equation. So this is the first term and this is the second term. The first term is the power developed due to the field excitation and the second one is due to the reluctance power. So the power developed is the sum of the field excitation power and the reluctance power. Now suppose we have a cylindrical rotor machine. So if we have a cylindrical rotor, rotor machine, it means that the direct axis and quadrature axis will be equal. It means if these are equal, so these will become 0 because on the numerator we have 0 and the power due to the second term will vanish and only the power of the first term will be there. So for a cylindrical rotor machine, the power developed is E naught V by X D sine delta. Also, if no field excitation is there, so if field excitation is not there, the induced EMF will be 0. So if induced EMF is 0, this means that the first term will vanish and the power will be only because of the second term that is the reluctance power. So under the condition that induced EMF is 0, the power is basically due to the reluctance power. So in this particular lecture, we have focused on the salient pole machines and we have developed the power equation both for the cylindrical rotor as well as the salient pole machine. So these complete the entire alternator and in the next lecture we will focus on synchronous motor. Thank you for now.